Hello again everybody and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to Writing the Perfect A-Star Speech. OK, before I tell you what you need to do to achieve these things, it's nice to know what you know first. Pause this video briefly and write down what kind of structure you think you need to use in order to create a perfect A-Star Speech and write down any techniques or tips you feel you need in order to do that as well. Please press play when you're ready to resume. OK. This is the basic speech structure you'll need in order to achieve A-star. Obviously, you're looking at beginning, middle and end, an introduction, main body and conclusion. But you need to do the following things. To create a good speech, it's not just enough to say, I am going to write about this today. That's how you're going to get a D or a low C. To get perfect marks, you need to be more sophisticated. So open an engaging way, which makes you want to listen immediately. It could be achieved using straw man or anecdotes. I'll explain that in a moment. You don't want to instantly make your topic clear. You want to engage the audience and make them wonder what you're going to be referring to. Within the next part of your introduction, that's when you should make the purpose of your speech clear. Within the main body, you'll use a number of topic sentences, which are essentially your points in your PEE. But they're a short, simple sentence which, if linked, which is obviously your higher A and A style idea, will create a better overall structure to your speech. Within those paragraphs, you then want to use a variety of techniques in order to develop that idea. If it's advisory, you'll be offering help. If it's persuasive, you'll be using a number of persuasive techniques. Finally, in your conclusion, you want to summarise your overall argument or your view. But again, it's a really good idea for whole text structure to go back to that original opening. Normally, the best thing to use is an image, really, because everyone likes to listen to a story. Check over your work, and you've got the perfect structure to a speech there. Now, these are some of the key elements you need to remember in order to achieve A star for any writing exam question. Always plan the content first, very, very important. For a writing question, it can be quite simple, but you need to not have, you know, doing this will mean that you don't have to stop to think about what you're writing about. Always make sure it matches the purpose. Always make sure your piece matches the genre. If it's a letter, a report, or a speech in this instance, it has to look like that. Obviously, though, if you're writing a newspaper article, you don't have to write in columns. Sentence types. Use a variety of those sentences for effect. A variety of sentence types is important, rather than just using the same one over and over again. Use your complex punctuation. Make sure the formality matches. So if you're obviously writing a letter to the headmistress or your head teacher, that would be very different to if you're writing a letter to your friend. Make sure you use different lengths of paragraphs. Spelling's obviously important. Make sure the whole structure is effective, which is why we've just looked at how to structure a whole speech. Make it interesting. If it's but you know, the examiner's got 300 pieces to mark. If yours stands out, if yours is original, then that means they're probably more likely to engage in it and give you a higher mark. But more importantly, I think, if you're going to get A star with the writing question, you're looking to show off your ability. You need to show the examiner how good you are at this English language thing. So you've got to make sure you use that, all those techniques above and have fun with it, basically. Don't take it too seriously. It's obviously do what you're being asked to do, but have fun. Here are a list of the persuasive techniques, if you were to use a persuasive technique speech, that you could use. You're more than welcome to pause this and have a look at them. So some of the terms that we used in the structure slide are here for you to look at. OK, let's have a look at how an A-star speech gets put into practice. This is a question you may get asked in the exam or you may get asked for coursework, for instance. Write a speech for a school debating competition which is either for or against the following topic. School uniforms should be banned. So obviously I need to identify who it's for. So it's for a school debating competition, so I know it's for my peers, but because of the competition, I know it's formal. I'm writing a speech, and obviously th the focus is school uniforms should or should not be banned. Now my planning. As you can see, all I've done is really, my one to five points there are just ideas, things I could include. It's also a good idea, underneath, to list the different types of punctuation. And as you go along when you're writing, just cross them off. And if you notice at the end when you check over your work, you haven't crossed one of them off, or we'll go back and change it. I've also put down a couple of key bits of vocabulary that I would like to use during my talk. And at the bottom, rather than writing down all the elements of A-star, it's always a better idea to write down the elements of A-star you forget to do. So what will this speech look like in practice then? 
bearing in mind all the things I've already told you. Okay, school uniforms shouldn't be banned. Let's see if I use an interesting image which isn't as obvious to gain your attention. We all remember that first morning, the alarm goes off, but we have no need for it as you have already been excitedly awake for hours. Spring out of bed, you glare at the precious thing that lays before you. As you digest what you have been made on this special day by a gleaming parent, you begin to consider how the day will unfold. After finishing off the last of your cereal, you choose for this momentous occasion. You run upstairs and begin to place on the new garments on. The crisp new trousers or skirt, the delightful new shirt or blouse, but above all else you've been looking forward to placing the new tie and blazer upon yourself. You finally belong. The first day of school is a special occasion. A big fuss is made of the way we look when we first descend the stairs to be hugged and kissed and photographed by our proud and delighted parental figures. That day is made all the more special by our uniforms, and even though making our loved ones proud of us should be enough, uniforms should be worn for a plethora of reasons. So notice those first three paragraphs are all my introduction. It's not necessarily clear what my speech is going to be about initially, but you can see whatever it is, it's a positive thing. Obviously supporting my argument that uniforms shouldn't be banned. Now, let's see my topic sentence. Firstly, uniforms help to create a strong sense of community. Done. Nice and simple. You now know what the rest of this paragraph is going to be about. We all like to belong. No one wants to be the child sat on their own at lunch, do they? Whenever you watch sporting events or military positions or even a group of choir singers, they have one thing in common. Uniform. I'm using repetition of uniform here, and this is a trinic structure, a rule of three. So notice how I list things in threes. Whenever you watch a group of pilots walk by in an airport, or see your national side collecting a trophy, or even see a postman cycle down the street, they will have one thing in common, uniform. Uniforms help to create a sense of belonging. It helps to create a sense of pride and identity. It helps us to feel as though we belong. Now it's a collective pronoun, we, so I did we can do it together. Without uniforms, our community will become fragmented and ruined. Who would you turn to if you saw an accident and needed immediate help? Who would help you if you needed assistance picking out your new headphones and wanted advice? And who could you turn to if, you if someone you love required medical attention? Uniforms help us to understand our roles within society. But whilst at times we may appear different, our uniforms help us to understand our place in the world and how we can make it a wonderful place to live in. Let's move on. Let's see. It's nice and cohesive now. As I've previously hinted to, so again, linking to ideas above, Uniforms help to eradicate problems. Nice clear topic sentence, nice and cohesive. Apart from the major issues identified earlier, which would occur if we had no forms of uniform, it helps to dissolve the issue of bullying in our school. For some people, Mufti Day or non-uniform day is a nightmare. I have nothing to wear is often the cry of many a teenager the day before. Don't pretend you don't plan your outfit meticulously. Our ridiculously expensive trainers now seem out of date. Our favourite t-shirts looking tired and old and our jeans are just not expensive enough. Uniform solves these problems. Notice a simple sentence there because it's a simple idea, a simple argument. Instead of being separated and judged by what we wear, we are brought together by our common appearance. Like a pride of lions or a herd of mighty buffalo, we support and protect the people who work, to, who work together with in order to travel the long distance towards success which lay ahead in our futures. And now let's see if we're cohesive again. That sense of driving forward like a juggernaut towards success is no accident. Uniforms create a sense of focus which we wouldn't otherwise be present. Many of you may argue that other schools don't have uniforms, but isn't it interesting they seem to always look upon you in envy at the bus stop, or seem to tug at their battered sweatshirts, which are uniform anyway? <coughs> our uniform helps to create focus on our learning, not our dress sense. They help us to focus on our future, not our present, and they help us to focus on what's important not what is irrelevant. So now, here comes my conclusion. Let's see if it links back to that original idea. So, in the future, when you walk elegantly down the stairs on that special first day with your family's eyes moistened by tears of pride, remember that the uniform you have on, whether that be a brand new suit for a high-powered job or a tracksuit with a national logo emblazoned upon it, or your new school uniform, is a symbol of pride, success, and a measure of your achievements. Thank you for listening. So obviously I would proofread that, make sure I'm happy with it, but that covers essentially everything we need to know. So, thank you for listening. You're more than welcome to go back over these slides and um, looking through anything you need to. But remember, the overall structure of an A-star speech, remember the techniques you can use for persuasive speech, but just as importantly, 
Remember the skills you need to demonstrate if you're going to produce any A-star piece of writing. Good luck and thank you for listening.